Hi, I have a wonderful patient uh, from out of state. She is six days out from her surgery. Now, let me ask you a few questions. You had two 40cc implants uh, removed. Now, how do you feel now versus, let's say, a week ago when I first saw you? Lighter. I can breathe. I can take a deep breath. I don't have any pain in my face or my head. I no longer have, wake up with my hands hurting or joint pain in my fingers. Now, you were only 35 back then. Now, you're 36. Yes. And uh, so, uh, you know, for someone young like you, you know, if we double your age and still add eight years, that's the age of the present. You have a whole life ahead of you, and you're complaining of this joint pain. Now, tell us more about, you told me about the headache, for example. I had excruciating headaches and pain in my face. I even had teeth pulled because I thought those were the culprit. And the only headache, I, headache I've had is the day of surgery, which I'm saying is anesthesia, I'm assuming. But I haven't had one since. And, and time will be witness. You yes. keep us posted because, you know, six days is six days. But we'll see how you're going to improve. And again, many, many patients have said exactly what you said that their headaches improved dramatically where since the surgery they have not had had a single headache and will have the patients attest to this as well now uh, you also mentioned that you would sweat a lot please tell us more about that i would wake up in the middle of the night and have to change my pajamas because i was sweating so profusely but i haven't had that problem since i've had the surgery right and then again six days of proof we'll see the heel is real now how much pain do you have how much pain medications did you need after the surgery i took two advil and that was only because i had neck pain from sleeping on an elevated pillow I haven't right. had any pain from the surgery. Right, and this is what I keep echoing and the patients will find repeatedly. Almost a good two-thirds of my patients need pain meds for two or three days. And then after that, they are basically uh, free of the pain meds. And this is exactly the goal where the delicate, uh, you know, intricate surgery is done, where there is no trauma to any tissue and it's done in a very delicate way such that the patient has minimal pain afterwards. Every handling of the tissue is done with care and ease and comfort. Now, let me ask you this. You mentioned, how was your anesthesia experience? Wonderful. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble coming back awake or on the way home, or I wasn't super tired or groggy, no nausea, nausea. I was fine. Okay, good, good. And look, if you look at yourself right now, and we'll end with this, you did not need drains, nope. and you did not need a lift, as you can see. And if you ask me, you have more a natural feel minus the relatively, uh, what I would say, slow or below average size of an implant. And this is where, look, a lift is a lift is not required, especially in the young ladies. And absolutely, the need for the drain is not there. Uh, and uh, I, I have said this many times, and I'll say this again, the last time I used drains in any of my patients was almost two and a half years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And this is where with the many ruptured cases, and even the many intact, even the large 800cc ruptured cases, I have not had the need for drain simply because it was not required. Uh, and the surgery can safely be done without the need for drains and without the need for a lift. Now, there are some patients who are candidates for a lift, but a uh, vast majority of them do not need a lift. And from what I have said, 80%. Now, you want to tell anyone, now, how did you end up finding me? How did you end up choosing me? Actually, I just started researching. I was learning more and more about breast implant illness, and I had many of the symptoms. So I started researching and found some people around Indianapolis, but they all still did breast augmentation. So I didn't agree with going to someone who still believed in implants. So I started searching through Facebook and actually found you there and just read through all the hundreds and thousands of reviews and amazing stories. No, no, thank you very much. I will say this very definitively. Anyone who puts an implant does not believe in breast implant illness. You cannot have it both ways and you say that the earth is flat and round at the same time. It is one or the other. Either you believe in breast implant illness. And now, eventually, everyone, 100% of the patients are going to succumb to breast implant illness. And someone asked me this the other day, why? I said, listen, the implants are not meant to be in the body forever. Sometimes they may rupture in four years. They may rupture in two decades or three decades, and they cause breast implant illness. You have the BILCL. You have these other problems, and the many other problems of contracture amongst many other problems that you hear and see, which the manufacturers themselves have acknowledged, including the FDA. So 
you don't want to be putting in uh, basically implants that are only temporary and that are replete with problems. Well, thank you very much for sharing your journey. Uh, I appreciate, uh, we'll continue to hear from you so that we can tell the FDA and the plastic surgeons and, and the many other rheumatologists uh, out there that this is real. You were, lack of a better word, a victim of implants and now you have freedom and nothing to worry about. One thing I like to mention, and this is important, I did some phone consults over the weekend and one of the patients said, well, one of my primary care doctors does not believe in breast implant illness. And I said, if you ask me about blood pressure, I have no idea. If you ask me about diabetes management, I have no idea. The last time I did that was when I was a med student, you know, and that was as a student. This is not my specialty and I wouldn't expect a primary care doctor to weigh in and tell me about what is breast implant illness. Now they can certainly be taught but the system itself is not teaching them and it is unfortunately the patients and the social media that is alerting them about what is breast implant illness. Many of the primary care doctors have not even touched the breast implant, right? Many of the general surgeons, for example, and I wouldn't, with all due respect and professionalism, would not expect much from them as far as weighing in what is breast implant illness. So this is something where the patients are taking this in their own hands and teaching each other. And this is exactly the purpose of this video. So that if you're young and a young mom and a young family, you are hurting, you know that there is a reason for the hurt. And it is these implants once you have been worked up by your primary care doctor. Now, thanks for sharing your journey. I appreciate it and wish you a safe trip back. Thank you, Dr. Khan.